Hello and welcome back and today it's another before you buy. Today I want to talk about 2.5 GBE or 2.5 G or 2.5 G base T. Ultimately I want to talk about 2.5 gigabit ethernet. The connection that predominantly uses uh, copper based connectivity over RJ45 and allows you to have up to a potential 2.5 times the bandwidth of traditional ethernet connectivity. What I want to talk about today is some of the things you need to bear in mind if you are considering entering into the hardware market on devices that actually feature this kind of connectivity. Because although it can sound appealing, there are reasons why you might and might not want to go for it. Rather than do my usual five by five, I'm just gonna go through bullet points on this because a lot of what we know about 2.5 GBE is actually pretty obvious just because we're used to ethernet connectivity and although this isn't 10G and some of those highfalutin 1000 megabytes per second connectivity, this is where we're looking at devices that have started to arrive on the scene where by default they might have arrived with 1 GBE and now they're arriving with 2.5 GBE at pretty much the same cost. That's not always the case and there's a lot of devices out there that ask you to pay a little bit more for this connectivity and a lot of people don't seem to realize that you don't just get 2.5 GB or 250 megabytes per second or so automatically. There's actually a lot more to it than that. So it's worth highlighting some of the factors that go into considering 2.5 G in your home or office network to see if you're really going to see the advantages of it. And if this is just some meaningless add-on for some of you that you're never going to take advantage of. So the first thing, let's talk about the most important thing to a number of you out there. But specifically, if you are looking at home users, you know, the kind of commercial area. When 2.5 GB has started to arrive more and more on devices that home users purchase. I've got a number of them here. And of course, one of the most obvious ones is the range here from QNAP in the 53D series. They weren't the first to roll out 2.5G on their desktop home user NAS devices. That goes to the Nimbus store series from Acer store. But I do think, despite them being the first ones to enter the commercial NAS market with it, QNAP have really picked it up very quickly afterwards and run with it in a much broader fashion. Now, the price of 2.5 GBE is an important factor because although it is 2.5 times the performance of one GBE, the actual scaling of price is very different depending on the device you go for. So for example, if you're looking at NASes that have got 2.5 GBE, the NAS providers out there that have uh, uh, included 2.5 GBE on their systems, and again, I'm gonna say largely QNAP, but other brands like Acer Store are doing it as well. These devices have arrived with those ports adding zero extra to the price. They've included 2.5 GBE ports. So again, they look exactly the same as normal Ethernet ports. They work exactly the same as standard 1 GBE over RJ45 in terms of backwards compatibility, but they also give you a little bit of future proofing there in order to get those higher performance speeds and they don't charge you extra for that. However, in other devices, such as network interface card upgrades, such as USB to 2.5G adapters, such as routers and switches that are factored in 2.5G, these are devices where they have currently charged a premium. It's not as bad as it was a couple of years ago, but you still have to pay extra. Now, unsurprisingly, currently, if you do want to buy a device that isn't a NAS that factors in 2.5 GBE, you will end up paying around two to two and a half times the usual price, which given you're comparing one against 2.5, that shouldn't come as a, a huge shock. But when it was first launched commercially, remember, because it's been around for a long time, particularly in terms of auto negotiation, when 2.5 GBE devices and peripherals precisely were announced, the prices were actually three to four times in some cases. And again, we are looking at PCIe cards, we're talking adapters, and we're talking about routers and switches these devices arrived notably higher. Luckily, the price has come down substantially in terms of how much a device, uh, a peripheral device or upgrade that arrives with 2.5 GBE costs, but still, it will cost you more. But the real cost of 2.5 GBE isn't really in the peripherals, the upgrades, or the NAS. The cost of them is when you want to upgrade your clients. And a lot of people seem to forget that when it comes to pricing up 2.5 G. So say for example, you were to buy a 2.5 GBE NAS. This is the 653D. This here is the 873A. There are lots of others out there, but we're looking at these because they're on the table. If you want to get one of these for 2.5 G, it doesn't cost you any extra than if you bought a similar NAS with one G. However, 
if you want to use a PC with 2.5G, you're either going to have to have an existing 10G card inside that has auto negotiation to allow up to 2.5G or 250 megabytes, or you're going to have to buy an upgrade card. And they retail for about 30 to 40 pounds for a 2.5G card. But bearing in mind a 10G card, you can pick up for about 100 these days. So again, the scaling of the prices, particularly when you look at a 1GBE network upgrade card, is about 15 to 20 quid. The scaling seems a little bit skewed. The same goes for adapters. Now, this adapter here is a 5G adapter, which is not really a fair um, um, comparison. But if you look at the Asus Store 2.5 GBE adapters and you compare those uh, with 1G adapters, so USB to uh, a USB 3.0 to a 1G adapter is about 20 nicker, whereas a USB to 2.5G adapter is about 30 um, quid, give or take, maybe 35. So again, you are definitely paying more for those. And the same goes for network switches and routers. These devices that have 2.5 GBE on board, you have to pay a little bit more. So what I'm saying is the price of 2.5 GBE is not as clear as you might think, and it's certainly not as transparent as it is with 10 GBE devices, because the cost of the majority of peripheral and upgrades that are in 2.5G are not priced as clearly as you find on NAS. And you would think 2.5G should cost one quarter of 10G, and maybe 2.5 times the cost of 1G, it simply doesn't, with different devices costing different amounts. So make sure before you look at any device that has 2.5G and you tick that box as that's a reason to go for it, make sure you price up how much it's gonna to cost to roll out 2.5G on your PCs, your Macs, and other devices in your network environment. So next, let's talk about performance. What does it take to push through 2.5 GBE bandwidth? Because you've now got this pathway via a single connection or multiple if you get a device that's got multiple ports. But for each 2.5 G connection, it allows up to and around 250 megabytes of upload and then download. So you have got that kind of pathway there for that 250 to send all your data through. Can How hard or easy is it to facilitate and completely saturate that connection? Well, not very hard at all. Most modern hard drives, even in non-pro form, can easily put out somewhere between 180 to 200 or so megabytes per second, with enterprise-level hard drives on their own able to chuck out 240 to 260 megs very, very easily. So in terms of performance within your network and utilizing things like NAS, saturating 2.5G is incredibly easy. You won't have to think the way you do with 10G to go, right, I've got a 1000 megs connection, I've got to make sure I've got the right drives and the right RAID and everything to really get the most of that. 2.5G doesn't require that. That said, it's worth remembering the difference between network and the internet. Network, in-house, internet, outside the house. And if you think that you're gonna have a network with 2.5 GBE, so you can all enjoy faster internet speeds shared with that 2.5G switch being connected to a router that's gonna push that through, it is worth remembering two things. One, you have to make sure that the switch you are utilizing, if connected to a router or modem, is using a 2.5G port. If, you, if not, the majority of routers, it has to be said, either arrive predominantly with 1G, especially ISP routers, or they might have just a single 2.5G port. If you connect a 2.5G switch to a router with just or via a 1GBE gigabit LAN connection on that router, you have just bottlenecked your internet connectivity externally. So it won't matter that the rest of your devices potentially can facilitate 250 megs because you've just throttled your internet speed via that router. The second and probably way, way more important factor when it comes to performance within 2.5 GBE with regard to the internet is your internet service provider speeds. Remember, most internet speeds are measured in megabits uh, or they are measured in gigabits. The result is that often when you see an internet connection, very few places commercially um, particular or even like home users in the majority of the world are able to enjoy speeds of higher than one gigabit much um, much higher uh, much higher than one gigabit so the result is that one gigabit is not going to give them 
much more than 100 megabytes per second anyway. If your internet service provider promises higher than a gigabit speeds, remember that they are almost certainly going to be focusing on the download, not the upload. And even if they promise higher than gigabit speeds, remember that that is a ideal scenario and those are at peak. Chances are you're not going to be hitting that top end all the time due to fair usage, due to shared bandwidth and proximity from your local exchange. So if you are thinking of going for a 2.5 GBE environment and you already have connected to a router that has a 2.5 GBE port, bear in mind you're going to have to make sure that you have an internet connection that far exceeds that of one gigabit. Otherwise, the internet's very rarely going to exceed 100 megabytes per second anyway, and therefore trying to push that through a 2.5 GBE connection to a switch and all the other devices is going to be largely pointless. Of course, if you can exceed those speeds, and I know there's certain areas of Germany and definitely some of the areas of the East that get some fantastic internet speeds, they're more luck to you. But just make sure that you've made sure the switch is connected to a 2.5G router and the router is connected to a 2.5 GBE or gigabit internet connection at most. So with regards to uh, performance, we talked about switches, we talked about routers, we talked about NAS, we talked about adapters, which I think leads us very neatly onto the subject of availability. Because 2.5 GPE, although significantly more available and significantly more implemented in this year, 2021, the year of our law, 2021, it has to be said that 2.5 GPE is by no means commonplace. I've seen it be integrated in some um, ISP routers around the world, but we are talking, I could count them on one hand. You can, of course, see 2.5 GBE on premium routers. You can see 2.5 GBE either widespread or a kind of token one or two ports on some devices. And again, QNAP have really pioneered that. But 2.5 GBE is by no means a dominant market share. I would say that 10 GBE still exceeds it in popularity, and a lot of that is because 10 GBE has become significantly more affordable. So in terms of availability, you're really seeing it more on NAS devices and on switches than on anything else. The adapters, the cards, a lot of the time, the technology behind creating a 10 GBE network peripheral or upgrade and a 2.5 GBE network peripheral or upgrade are so close that it's almost pointless to create a 2.5 GBE alternative, be it because it's very hard to price it, it may undercut the 10 GBE, or the 10 GBE alternative will be so affordable as to make the 2.5 GBE solution rather superfluous. So it's worth bearing in mind the availability of 2.5 GBE, although way more over the last couple of years, is by no means a dominant force right now. And it may be that you are investing in 2.5 GBE for future proofing that you're never even going to use. And if you're buying 2.5 GBE for future proofing and you're chucking a bit of token money to one side, go for 10G. It's significantly more likely to be used later in your um, lifespan of your hardware and also far, far more useful overall which leads us into how technology moves forward, and of course, Wi-Fi 6. Now, Wi-Fi 6 kind of counters a lot of the things I've just said. I should really do a before you buy on Wi-Fi 6 now and talk about it, but Wi-Fi 6 upgrades and Wi-Fi 6 routers are becoming a lot, lot more common and a lot more affordable to a point where we're seeing a lot of router manufacturers produce Wi-Fi 6 solutions at the exact same cost as Wi-Fi 5. And with that, we're seeing a lot of routers, a lot of network peripheral upgrades that factor in 2.5 GB alongside that. Why? Because even the most base Wi-Fi 6 devices support 2.4 gigabit connectivity. Maybe it'll be across two bands of 1200 and I believe 800 or two 1200 bands or multiple five gigahertz bands and a single 2.4 gigahertz bands. Whatever way you look at it, Wi-Fi 6 pushes through to multiple connected users way more than a gigabit connectivity. And if you want to make sure that the rest of your network can push data through that, that's where Wi-Fi 6 and 2.5 GBE can meld very, very well. And we're seeing these two devices kind of grow in popularity at the same time. Arguably, Wi-Fi 6 has taken hold significantly more um, successfully. We've seen it insofar as the latest mobile phones, we've seen the latest generation of consoles including PS5 factoring Wi-Fi 6, but also we're seeing 
Root is arriving with Wi-Fi 6 and 2.5 GBE ports. So again, those two together, you can see how they would work together very, very well. And even QNAP, with a lot of their solutions, have factored in 2.5 GBE and Wi-Fi 6 upgrades within their portfolio. And you can kind of see the reason why to create a much faster, heavier bandwidth available network that's private without the need of external connectivity from the likes of the internet and exchanges like that. So if you are looking at Wi-Fi 6 or you already have Wi-Fi 6 in your network environment for home or business, that may be a reason where 2.5 GBE may be desirable to you to really open up the channels for one or more users to enjoy wireless connectivity to connected router devices and connected client devices sharing data between them over the network with 2.5 GBE. So those have really been the most um, decide, uh, the biggest deciding points for me when it comes to people making the jump to 2.5 GBE. I could mention lots and lots of products, but I'm trying to resist making this too much of a sales pitch. I've already talked about QNAP way too much in this video as it is. But what I would recommend is if you head down into the comments and you want to know some of the best 2.5 GBE products in the market right now, there's a link down there to the NAS Compare article where I talk about the do's and don'ts of setting up to 2.5 GBE, stuff that's happened, solutions that have come out, the perfect way to get the right setup, but more importantly, at the bottom of the article, I've recommended the top three switches, the top three routers, the top three upgrades, the top three NASes, and more if you want to move into 2.5G to save you a lot of time, a lot of money, and just basically the best for budget, best for value, best for performance. Do check those out. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do want to learn more about 2.5 GBE, I've covered the subject quite a lot. Not in as much detail as this video, but certainly in different exhaustive factors where I've looked at a lot of products. Do check them out on the playlist and the recent videos. Otherwise, click like if you've enjoyed the video, subscribe to learn more. And if you do need help choosing the right network attached storage solution for you, go into the comments. Use the free NAS Compares advice section. It's managed by myself and Eddie. We will answer your questions. It is not made for profit. It is an unbiased resource. We just want to help people get the right solution. It might not be the quickest. It might take an extra day or so sometimes to get response to you, but we will get there in the end. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.